Okie dokie, we are going live chaps. Can you all, there's lots of people here, hello. Can you all hear me everybody? Maybe you can just put in the um, chat box that you can hear me. Um, I don't think I'm, I'm muted. Let me just admit everybody, give me a sec. Admit, admit, I have to admit everybody, okay. Admit you, yes. Hello, hello, hello. Lindsay, hello, how are you? Hi. So everybody, if you just make sure that um, you're you're mute, you're you're muted, and the video is off, and then uh, there won't be any okay. um, bouncing bouncing back. Let me just admit everyone. Lots of people. Yay. Okay. Then let me just admit everybody. Perfect. So guys, you should have a little chat box there. Can you see where you can type things in? Can everybody hear me? If we just punch in the um, punch in your little chat box that you can hear me. Can you all hear me? Let's see what you're saying. Yes, excellent, good. I'm just letting everybody in still. Sorry, it takes a while. I don't. There should be a, a, a submit all button. But anyway, you're all muted. This is good. Let me just mute you all. Yes. Okay. Good. I'll give it a few more minutes, or maybe another minute. That's why I started early. Good, so how is everybody? How's everybody feeling? Are you, are you guys doing okay? Everyone coping? Yeah, good. Yeah, yay. Oh, I, I better mute you all, but it's nice to see you. Some people, it's really good. Okay, I'm still letting people on, hang on a sec. Uh, who else needs to come in? Yes, you can hear me, cool. Amazing. Admit you, yes, 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 yes. Fab, so excited to chat to you. There's so many people. I was really blown away by all of your interest. I, uh, I just had the idea and I was like, why don't I just do an online course and make a donation to this, um, the voluntary service? And uh, I was really blown away by how many people wanted to sign up. So you're obviously all keen beans to learn about nutrition. Um, right, a few more people. Uh, okay. Thank you, okay, good. Okay. Amazing. Right, guys, I think we're nearly there. A few more people coming on board. Sorry, didn't know that I had to admit everybody. Um, good, are you all sitting com comfortably? I can see some of you, just nod. Hello, wave. <laughs> Has everybody got their cups of tea ready? And their pens and papers. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that, good, excellent. I'm glad that you're here and hoping that you can make lots of notes. I'm still letting people in, sorry. Let them into the room. Good, okay. Amazing. I'll just admit everyone and then we'll get going. And guys, by the way, I'm gonna record this. So for those of you that wanna catch up, I'm gonna send it in an email probably tomorrow morning. Um, and, and anyone that's missed it, I'll send it out to them. And um, by signing up to this course, it means that you're automatically um, going on to all the other courses, so every Wednesday. Um, and then, what else did I need to tell you? I'm gonna send you the, uh, the ebook after this, um, after this session as well. But I'll probably send everything in the morning, is that okay? Cool. Right, we're nearly there. Sorry, there's so many people. Mute everybody, good. Right, I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Where's my little, uh, where's my little presentation? Here we go, excellent. Right, can you guys all see the screen as well? Just pop, if you can just see that, that online nutrition course. Can you all see that, yeah? Can you do some nods? Thank you. Yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Good, lovely to see you, lovely to see you too. So excited! I just double check there's not more people coming in. Here we go. So admitting people. Yeah, okay. So it's just gone six. I just wanna make sure that there's nobody missing. It's all good. Right, chaps, let's get cracking. So there's lots to go through. Um, first of all, thank you so much. My name is Rosie, founder of Miss Nutritionist. Um, really excited to chat with you this evening. Um, for those of you that already made a donation, you're the best. We've already raised 650 pounds, which is awesome. I'm trying to raise 3,000 pounds. Um, so this course is obviously completely for free um, and I'm trying to raise money for the um, NHS volunteers and I've chosen the uh, Royal Voluntary Service 
Um, and basically what these volunteers do is they go to the homes of old people um, and they provide them with food, they do transportation, so they'll drive people to the, to the hospitals if they need it. Um, and they also train all the new volunteers. So, you know, if you make a small donation, even just five pounds, um, and if 300 of you do that, then we've raised, then we've um, raised one and a half thousand pounds. So I've just put the link there again as well. Um, and uh, so it's really great. I'm so chuffed um, that we've been able to raise that much money. And um, I'm hoping that by the end of the three weeks time, uh, we'll, we'll reach our target. There's still people coming into the room. Hello everybody, hello new people. Thanks for coming. I was just saying a big thank you to everybody. Um, you've been very, very generous. Thank you for supporting me and thank you for uh, making a donation so far. Um, yeah, great. Good. Perfect. Okay, so let's get going. What are we gonna be covering today? Let me share with you. Right. Today we're going to be talking about what a healthy diet is, so I'm going to start with an overview of what a healthy diet is. Then I'm going to cover all about the macronutrients, I'm going to cover micronutrients, and then we're going to talk about a lot, a lot about energy. Sorry, there's still people coming in. Um, hello, hello, hello. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, cellular energy and how to have energy, and all of the factors that affect your energy, and we'll be talking about foods to eat for energy, foods that zap your energy, um, and then I'm going to talk to you about how stress affects your energy and uh, how, how to basically support the adrenal glands. And then I'm gonna open it up to you guys and you're gonna ask me your questions. So does that sound good? Can I have a thumbs up, nods and yeses, please? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, cool. It's fun, isn't it? Amazing. Good, so just make sure there's nobody else coming on here. Okay, great. So a little bit about me before we start. Um, I, I don't know if you guys know this. I mean, I know a lot of you already, but um, basically my story is, uh, six years ago, on March 6, 2014, I was basically walking in the park, um, and all of a sudden I felt really, really dizzy. And before I knew it, my knees basically went from underneath me and I collapsed to the ground. And I freaked out because nothing like that had ever happened to me before. Um, so I went home, climbed into bed, and I basically stayed there for three years straight. Um, and I couldn't move, I couldn't um, work, I couldn't exercise, my social life went out the window, and basically at my worst, I couldn't even lift my head off the pillow. So I did what anybody would do in that situation. I took myself off to the doctors and I was like, I'm so exhausted, I'm completely paralyzed with exhaustion. Please, can you run some tests on me? And they said, yeah, but the results came back and I was totally normal, there was nothing wrong with me. And uh, the doctor just said that I was depressed and she tried to give me some antidepressants. So I burst into tears, um, went home and felt really, really alone, really frustrated because I felt like I didn't know what was going on and I felt like nobody was there to help me. So I basically went home, slept and I slept and I slept and I slept, but no amount of sleep was making me feel better. Um, so I had to look upon myself to basically heal myself and that's exactly what I started to do. So I did a ton of research, I did lots of tests on myself, I went to see every alternative health practitioner going and after about six six to eight months, I eventually got diagnosed with uh, severe burnout. Um, now, let me tell you something, burnout sucks, and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Uh, it really is the hardest thing I've ever, ever, ever had to deal with. And uh, I basically got back on my feet by making loads and loads of changes, and it was really difficult. I had to change my diet, I had to change my lifestyle, I had to change my mindset, and um, it was really, really challenging. And uh, you know, that is why I'm here today doing what I do. And I teach everybody how to be energized. I teach everybody um, how not to burn out. That's why I've written my book, Burnout's Bitch, and I'll share it with you later. It's all about my recovery from burning out and how you can um, identify why you're tired all the time. So it's all really exciting and I love doing what I'm doing, but you know, uh, my message is really simple. It's burnout sucks. And uh, I, I, I want you guys to take away um, some clinical pearls tonight and I might if we've got time at the end I might ask everybody what one thing they might change um, now that uh, at the end of this course so yeah so that's why I do what I do really excited to talk to you and uh, yeah and oh, sorry there's still people coming on late people what's going on here thank you for coming we just started good so what is a healthy diet? I'm sure all of you are very much into your um, health and nutrition and a lot of you are following a very healthy diet. But I just thought I'd start by giving a brief sort of overview as a nutritionist's healthy diet. So really a healthy diet consists of seven to eight portions of fruits and vegetables daily with the focus being on vegetables. 
Um, I always advocate having about five portions of vegetables per day and two portions of fruit because whilst fruit is very healthy and it's got vitamins and minerals and fiber, it is pure fructose. So you just want to be careful about not overdoing the sugar on, on, the, on that. Um, does everybody, how many portions of fruits and vegetables does everybody get in their diet, do you think? Just pop in the chat box so I can see. Um, who thinks that they get, you know, five portions of red, maybe two, maybe eight? Just pop in the chat box how many, um, how many portions you get in per day, just so I can gauge how healthy you are. Five to six, one to two, okay. Three, eight, oh, well done. Yeah, probably five. Mixed bag there, six to eight. Okay, good. So most of you are very healthy. Great. Okay, and so what else do we need? We need quality protein, and we're going to be talking all about the importance of protein. We need um, adequate fiber, so that's things like oats, brown rice, lentils, and we're going to be talking all about fiber. We need essential fats, um, essential fatty acids, so that's things like fish, nuts, seeds, avocados. Um, every single day we need these foods, and we need to be drinking at least two liters of water a day. Cheers. So obviously we want to think about what we need in moderation. Um, and I'm definitely not a, um, uh, a food Nazi. I'm a big believer in the 80-20 rule, which is 80% of the time you feed your body, you give it what it needs, and 20% of the time you have a piece of chocolate cake or you have a glass of wine. But certainly in moderation, we want to make sure that we're not overdoing the sugary foods, the refined carbohydrates like the cakes, the chocolates, the biscuits, um, because they just don't have very many nutrients in them. They tend to make you feel tired. You want to make sure that you're avoiding lots of hydrogenated fats and um, bad fats. That's things like crisps, chips, and lots of the yellow cheese, um, and not too much stimulants, so not too much alcohol, coffee, tea. And I'm sure you guys know this, but we're going to be going through um, which foods to be focused on, which ones, um, which ones to be avoiding as well. I just want to check if we've got any more participants coming, Sarah. Sorry to keep you waiting. Good. Um, yes, spot on. Good. Well done. So all of you are following a very healthy diet. So let's cover macronutrients. So macronutrients, guys, these are your proteins, your carbohydrates, and your fats. And I've put together um, some slides which goes through each of them. And this is a very basic overview, and it might be um, repetition for some of you, but it, I just, you know, there's a lot to cover, and I just wanted to just do a nutrition basics um, course. So um, essential fatty acids are called essential because your body doesn't make them. That's why we have to ingest them. And there are two types of essential fatty acids. We've got uh, the omega-6 family, and that is linoleic acid. That's, what that's the name of it. And the second is alpha-linolenic acid, or otherwise known as ALA, and that's the omega-3 family. So the omega-3 fats are mostly found in fish. That's salmon, mackerel, tuna, herring. Um, and they're also found in vegetarian sources as well, such as nuts, seeds, mostly uh, very high, do high amounts in flax seeds, chia seeds, and walnuts. And if we look at the bracket of omega-3 fatty acids, these are really the healing uh, fats. These are the most, um, they've got the most sort of health benefits to them. And that is because of the two components that the omega-3 fats have. And that is EPA, which stands for eicosapentaenoic acid, and DHA, which is um, DOCA, uh, so sorry, um, docosohexanoic acid. Try saying that after a glass of wine. <laughs> so the DHA is really important for um, a healthy heart because it's really um, important for maintaining normal blood pressure. And it's also good for um, normal brain development um, and vision. And it's really one of the most important nutrients you can give your baby when you're pregnant because DHA is really important for the development of the baby's brain and their eyes. Um, now EPA, this is really the... Um, part of the omega-3 fatty um, family acid, sorry, uh, fatty acid, which is really, um, has really powerful anti-inflammatory properties. Um, so if you're taking, if you're eating lots of oily fish um, and you've got, you know, inflammatory conditions like arthritis or eczema or anything, anything ending, in, ending in itis is basically an inflammation. Um, but these um, uh, omega-3 fatty acids have very powerful anti-inflammatory properties so really good to eat um, fish well twice a week two portions of oily fish a week that's what the government recommends but they, they also help to protect the heart and they these omega-3 fatty acids help to lower the risk of developing chronic diseases such as heart disease so then we've got the omega-6 uh, fatty acids and these are found predominantly in meat such as chicken eggs and avocados and we really need a balance of both omega-3 and omega-6 in the diets. 
However, most people are actually, um, they have an excess of omega-6 in the body over omega-3. So it's, quite, it's more common for people to be deficient in omega-3. Um, and that's because um, omega-6 is much more wildly available in the diet versus omega-3. Um, but if you are deficient in omega-3 fatty acids, then you're going to experience like dry skin, um, dry, dry hair, brittle nails, joint pain, and poor concentration. So if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, it's recommended to supplement omega-3 fats um, so that the ratio in the body is correct. I just want to check if we've not got any latecomers here. A few more late people. Admit you. Hello, newcomers. So, um, yes. And then we obviously we want to make sure that we're not overdoing the bad fats. So the bad fats, they're known as trans fatty acids or hydrogenated fats. And these are like the deep fried foods like French fries, donuts, um, margarine, um, baked goods, cookies, cakes, pastries. Th these are the things that we want to try to avoid or certainly in moderation because these fats can raise cholesterol in the body. And they've also been linked to increased risk of inflammation. Um, and then if you've got excess inflammation in the body, it can cause harmful health effects that may include heart disease, diabetes, and a stroke. So we want to make sure that we're um, making sure that we're eating the omega-3 fatty acid foods um, and the omega-6 fatty acids, but obviously moderating on the bad, on the bad fats. So proteins. Um, proteins are the building blocks of life. They're basically large molecules made up of long chains of amino acids. And amino acids are the uh, building blocks of proteins. And all cells and tissues contain protein. And that is why protein is essential for growth and repair and maintenance and general good health. So the quality of the protein is also important and it depends on the amino acids that are present. So proteins from animal sources have a higher biological value than proteins from plant sources. That is why um, animal proteins are known as primary proteins. So that's things like chicken, eggs, and meat. And then you've got something called secondary proteins, which is your plant-based protein. So that's things like soybeans, quinoa, chickpeas. And the reason they're called primary proteins is because all, all of the primary proteins, they actually contain something called um, the essential amino acid. There are eight essential amino acids. And this is essentially why they're called essential amino acids, because our bodies, again, they don't make them. And this is why you have to ingest them. So um, there are about 20 um, amino acids commonly found in plant and animal proteins, but there are only eight essential amino acids, uh, which your body doesn't make, and that's why we need to ingest them. And all of the primary proteins um, contain these eight essential amino acids, and these are the, um, the magic eight. It's leucine, isoleucine, valine, threonine, methionine, um, phenylalanine, tryptophan, and lysine. So if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, then it's a good idea to combine um, and mix your, um, your foods together. So you might combine, let's say, um, rice um, and tofu in the same meal in order to make it more of a complete protein. So by combining your foods as a vegetarian or, or a, um, a vegan, if you're not eating these, these protein, these animal meats, um, it basically results in a higher biological value. So um, does anybody know how many grams of protein we need? I'll just pop it in your little chat box there, guys. How many grams of protein do you think we need every single day? How much? How do you, how do you work it out? Any ideas? Let's have a look, see what you're saying. 50 grams, 120, 80 grams. Yeah, what, that's right, bingo. So you need a gram of protein per kilo of body weight. Yeah, very good. So that basically means if you weigh 60 kilos, you need 60 grams of protein per day. And if you weigh 80 kilos, you need 80 grams of protein per day. Now I'll just share with you, a 100 gram chicken breast, about that big, does not give you 100 grams of protein. Any guesses, how many grams of protein is in 100 grams of chicken, chicken breast? Any guesses, how many grams of protein are in um, 100 grams of, of chicken breast? About 20, 22? Yeah, you're quite close. Yeah, 30. It's about 30 grams of protein. How many grams of protein are in one egg, guys? Does anybody know? And you're not allowed to Google. <laughs> How many grams of protein are in one egg? Yeah, five, 17. Well, that's quite high. 10, 8, 15. The answer is about seven. Okay. Same thing with a, um, a fish fillet. If you've got a 100 gram fish fillet, um, it doesn't give you 100 grams of protein. It gives you about 25. Okay. So we've really got to get that protein in at every minute and snack. And a bit later on, I'm going to be sharing with you um, how we can get protein in and the protein-based foods and um, why it's so important in the diet. So those are the essential, um, the eight essential amino acids, and that's essentially why they're called essential amino acids, because we need them. 
Okay, good. I'll just check that nobody's coming in late. No, we're all good. Perfect. So carbohydrates, carbohydrates, they're also known as saccharides or sugars and starches. And these are major food source and a key form of energy for basic our bodies. And uh, all of the carbohydrates that we ingest get converted into glucose once digested. Um, and carbohydrates basically consist of a carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. So the two different types of carbohydrates, I'm sure you know what they are. We've got simple carbohydrates, and then we've got complex carbohydrates. So the simple carbohydrates are the sugars, and the, they consist of just one or two sugar molecules. That's why they're called simple sugars. And these um, simple carbohydrates, they release their sugars into the bloodstream very quickly, um, and they don't contain very many nutrients. So examples of simple uh, sugars are things like white bread, cakes, biscuits. They're also known as refined carbohydrates. Um, and then we've got something called the complex carbohydrates. Um, I call these the smart carbs. Um, they consist of long chains of sugar molecules and they release their sugars into the bloodstream much more slowly and therefore giving you much more energy. And I'll explain in a few more slides later on um, all about blood sugar balancing and how these carbohydrates affect you differently. Um, but essentially, you know, these complex carbohydrates, they're much higher in fiber, much higher in um, vitamins and minerals. Um, and um, that is why they, they're much more energy providing. And so examples of these include brown rice, vegetables, fruits, pulses, wholemeal pasta, that kind of thing. Just admitting a few more people. Great. So um, we need carbohydrates, everybody. We do need carbohydrates. It's actually your body's preferred energy source and it's your brain's preferred energy source. We've got to get that glucose going to the brain because that's what it runs on. Um, and carbohydrates provide us with a very important dietary component, which is fiber. So you need 25 grams of fiber per day and there's different types of fiber. I'm sure you've heard of these before. You've got insoluble fiber and you've got soluble fiber and they act a little bit differently in the body. Basically, insoluble fiber passes through our bodies without really being broken down. This is like the really bulky kind of fibrous foods that you know about. And that's things like whole grains like rice, oats, vegetables, potatoes with their skins on, nuts and seeds. Um, these are really good sources of um, insoluble fiber. And they basically move through and they reduce the amount of time it takes um, for you to go to the loo. Um, and then you've got soluble fiber. And soluble fiber actually dissolves in water and it forms like a gel in the gut. And um, it's really good for sort of softening the, the stools, making you go to the loo. So if you've got blocked bowels, it's a good idea to increase your levels of soluble fiber. Um, and it's it basically what soluble fiber does, it, it kind of acts like an intestinal broom and it sweeps through the intestinal tract, binding to toxins and binding to waste and pulling it out of your body. So um, good examples of soluble fiber are things like um, barley, rye, basically fruits and vegetables, pulses as well, beans, um, carrots, potatoes, that kind of thing. So you've got to make, we've got to make sure that we're getting at least 25 grams of fiber in per day. Who thinks they get in 25 grams of fiber? Do you guys even know? Does anybody measure their um, macronutrients? What, uh, what um, do you guys use like MyFitnessPal app? Does anybody document their macros? Let's have a look, see what you're saying. And in terms of, no, I never have. Okay, no, right. I mean, guys, if you want to start documenting your, your calories, your macros, your micros, I recommend getting the app MyFitnessPal. It's so good. You can basically type in everything that you've eaten in one day. And what I like about this app is it, it basically presents you with um, your ratios. So I would say good ratios of all um, the macronutrients, so carbs, fats, and proteins, I would go for 40% carbohydrates, 30% um, fats, 30% uh, protein. I generally find that that kind of macronutrient ratio across the board just seems to do well and people thrive on that. So again, if you want to get, if you want to start documenting your macronutrients, then you can download um, MyFitnessPal. Yeah. Good. What's the name of the app again? Let me write it in here. It's called MyFitnessPal. There we go. It's on the app store. Yeah. Cool. Um, so micronutrients, I love micronutrients. Basically, what micros are, are vitamins and minerals. And, um, you know, there's a certain amount of vitamins and minerals we need to ingest every single day. And they are found in all of our foods, well, apart from the refined carbohydrates and the sugary, empty, empty calorie, calorific foods. Um, but vitamins are essentially necessary for energy production. They're really important for the immune function. Um, they assist so that we don't get blood clots and lots of other bodily functions. And minerals play a really important role in growth, um, bone health, fluid balance, and several other processes. So I've basically put together 
a whole chart of different vitamins and minerals. So we've got water soluble vitamins. And basically what that means is most vitamins dissolve in water and they're known as water soluble vitamins and they're not easily stored in your body and they normally get flushed out with your urine when consumed in excess. And that's why when you take a B complex vitamin, your urine can go um, yellow. So it's just, it's just basically getting rid of all the um, water soluble vitamins that you haven't absorbed. But these water soluble vitamins, they're generally safe to take in high dosages. Um, because of that reason. So we've got bit, um, you've got all the B vitamins. So that's B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, all the way up to B12. And then you've got vitamin C. So those are your um, water-based, um, water-soluble vitamins. And I've put down here, you know, how all these vitamins and minerals work. So for example, B1, which is also known as tyamine, that's really good for helping to convert nutrients into energy. Um, B2, which is riboflavin, is necessary for energy production and cellular function. Um, and B3 drives the production of energy from food. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you all about why these vitamins and minerals are so important um, from an energy point of view a bit later. But I just thought, I, I won't go through every single one because um, there's a lot to get through, but I thought you guys, I'm going to send you the presentation and you guys can just sort of filter through and, and peruse through these um, uh, in your own time. So, but vitamin C is I, I really believe that vitamin C is the antiviral vitamin, guys. Um, and so if you're worried about getting the virus, bit of, an, of going off tack here, but make sure you're taking high doses of vitamin C. You want to get ascorbic acid. That's the form you want to take. And I would get it in a powdered form. And it comes in a big tub. And it's really cheap to, to, to buy. Um, and you want to be taking at least three to five grams of vitamin C per day because it's the antiviral vitamin. What vitamin C does is it stops the viruses from getting in in the first place. And it helps to resist that infection. And it also helps to reduce the um, duration of a cold. So just to protect your immune system, make sure you're taking vitamin C. Um, Good. Somebody said something here. Oh, it's called ascorbic acid. Yeah, it's really easy to do. Perfect. Jolly good. Um, so we've got fat soluble vitamins. So fat soluble vitamins do not dissolve in water. Um, they're best absorbed when consumed alongside a source of fat. Um, after consumption, fat soluble vitamins are stored in your liver and fatty, and fatty tissues for further use. So your fat soluble vitamins are vitamin A, which is really important for um, your eye health. Um, and you've got vitamin D, which is super important. I would say after vitamin C, vitamin D is the, num is the number two vitamin that you need to support your immune system. Um, and, it, uh, and vitamin D is, is, it basically acts more like a hormone in the body, but it's, it's really important for assisting the absorption of calcium for your bones. Um, vitamin E, that's also, it's, it's really powerful antioxidant, helps to protect cells from cellular damage. And vitamin K, which is required for um, blood clotting and proper bone development. And then we've got the, um, what's going on here? The macro minerals, and that's things like calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, chloro, potassium, sulfur. And macro minerals are needed in larger amounts than trace minerals in order to perform their specific role. So, you know, calcium is really important for the, um, the growth of your bones. Um, what else have we got here? Magnesium is one of the most important macro minerals. 50% um, of the population, population guys are actually deficient in magnesium. And if you're deficient in magnesium, you're going to feel tired. You're, you might have headaches. You might have sore muscles. You might have insomnia. You might find it difficult to fall asleep. It's a really, really powerful mineral because it's, it basically assists with over 300 enzyme reactions in the body. Um, and it's really important for regulating your blood pressure as well. Um, we want to make sure that we've got adequate um, sodium and potassium. If you're, if you're low in potassium, guys... Um, you might feel a bit dizzy and if you've got low um, sodium and potassium levels you might feel a bit dizzy when you stand up too quickly that's because um, you need um, adequate amounts of sodium and potassium to make sure that your blood pressure is maintained um, and if you guys are getting dizzy and you just wake up and you just feel a bit dizzy um, you can take your blood pressure and if it's low what you can do is just take half a teaspoon of salt put it in your water drink it and it will just lift your levels of sodium and potassium and you'll feel less dizzy that's what I used to do a lot when I was collapsed in bed and burnt out I was very dizzy all the time and my blood pressure was extremely low and every time I put salt in my water I, I would just instantly feel lifted and less dizzy it's a little little trick for you there <clears throat> and I find a lot of people with burnout typically tend to feel dizzy a lot of the time um, and so this is just a simple solution that you can take um, good so the trace minerals let me just get rid of this thing Good. The trace minerals are needed in much, much smaller amounts um, than the macro minerals, but they're still very, very, very important. And they, they, they're, they're very important for many things. So iron is a trace mineral, and this is really key for providing oxygen to the muscles. 
um, iron basically um, carries hemoglobin, um, sorry, hemoglobin is the protein that carries oxygen, iron around the blood. And um, that's why if you've got, um, if you don't have enough iron, then you end up with iron deficiency anemia. And basically you feel really tired when you walk up the stairs. Um, one way to identify if you've got um, iron deficiency anemia is if you just pull down your eye, the lower eyelid, and look at the color of your inner eye, it should be nice and pinky red. But quite often people with anemia, they have um, very pale inner eyelids. And you can also, what else you can do is you can push your nail bed down quite firm and then just quickly release it. And all the blood flow should quickly flood back into the bed. Um, and that indicates that you've got adequate heme in the blood and adequate iron in the bloodstream. But if it takes quite a long time for it to go red again and it stays white, it might indicate that you've got uh, low levels of iron. So what else have we got? We've got manganese, copper, zinc. Zinc is really important for wound healing and immune function and regulating our hormones. Iodine is the number one mineral for your thyroid. So if you've got underactive thyroid, you need to be taking um, additional iodine. And they've got fluoride and selenium. I, I won't go through all of them, guys, because I just I want to get through all the slides. But again, you can just look at these in your own time. Good. So let's talk about energy. <clears throat> I'm going to quickly rush to this slide. Okay, so I want to ask you guys some questions. So just put in your chat box a yes to any of these questions I'm going to ask you. So put, your, put a yes in the chat box if you feel tired all the time. I want to see how your energy is, guys. So put a yes in the chat box if you feel tired. Let's have a look. Um, who has mid-afternoon energy slumps? Up and down, yes, 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 always, okay. <laughs> yes, sometimes, yeah. And is anybody relying on stimulants like caffeine and sugar to keep them going during quarantine? Have you got, are you guys relying on, are you eating a lot of sugar right now to pick you up? Feeling a bit down, yeah, sugar treats, okay. And I really wanna know what your energy number is. So by that I mean, by, I mean um, on a scale of one to 10, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest, where would you put your energy generally now during quarantine? Six, four, gosh, three, no. Come and speak to me at the end. <laughs> Seven, six, five, yeah. Okay, these not some eights, yeah. Who would like more energy? Put your hand up, put a yes, yes, yes. And guys, what would you do if you had more energy? Just pop a little message in your chat box. If you had more energy, what would you do? Work, work out more more exercise, everything, <laughs> cook more, be more productive, get creative, more, feel more focused. Wow. Do you know what? Energy is everything. So I'm going to share with you now how we have more energy. But before I do, we're going to quickly understand where energy comes from. So have you guys heard of the mitochondria before or ATP? So we're basically going to look at the liver now. So in your liver, every single cell in your liver has something called a mitochondria. And I've got a lovely little picture of this mitochondria here. Now the mitochondria are very, very clever. They're basically mini factories, and these are factories for creating energy. And the energy that they provide is ATP, and that stands for adenosine triphosphate. This is your body's energy source. It's your, uh, your energy molecule, and it's manufactured in these little mitochondria factories in the liver. Um, and the ATP molecule is really like a charged battery ready to be used. Um, and um, it's basically, um, it, we need ATP to basically move, do exercise, and move our muscles. So at a cellular site here at this mitochondria, there are certain cofactors that you need in order for the ATP to be produced. So for example, CoQ10, um, B vitamins, magnesium, amino acids, vitamin E, L-carnitine. These are all nutrients that are needed. Um, to, they, they need to be around the mitochondria in order for ATP to be generated. And if you're lacking in... Um, B vitamins, magnesium, let's say you're really stressed or you, your diet, you're, maybe you're a vegan and you're not getting adequate B12, then it's likely that you, you might not be um, producing much ATP in the liver and you might be feeling tired. So quite, quite typically, people with chronic fatigue and ME, um, they tend to have issues with their mitochondria. And there's lots of studies to show that the mitochondria are not producing adequate ATP, which is why they feel constantly tired. So it might be that you need to um, maybe increase your B vitamins, maybe um, supplement with B vitamin, increase your um, uh, B vitamin foods, you know, like beans, oats, turkey, eggs, um, or maybe um, increase your magnesium rich foods. Magnesium is high in dark green leafy vegetables. That's things like broccoli, kale, um, spinach. 
So if you guys want more energy, this is what you need to do. You've got to balance your blood sugar levels, right? So takeaway message for you is much of our energy control is all about balancing our blood sugar levels, okay? Um, so how we balance, have you guys heard of blood sugar before? Just pop a yes in the drop box. So who's heard of balancing blood sugar levels? Does anybody, does anybody want to share with me what they know about it? Yep, 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 yep. And then I'll explain. How does it work, blood sugar, everybody? Any guesses? Actually, do you know what? When I do this talk live, I normally get silence there. Everyone's heard of it, but nobody knows how it works. So every time we eat, the level of sugar in our bloodstream rises. Okay, now your body can only handle about two teaspoons of sugar in the bloodstream at any one time. That's about a gram of sugar. And that's enough for us to get up, get dressed, go to work, that kind of thing. However, when we eat, every time we eat, the level of um, sugar in our bloodstream rises. Okay, so if you were to eat, drink, eat or drink something really, really sugary, your blood glucose is going to rise really high really quickly. So, and when that happens, it calls upon a hormone called insulin. Does anybody know which um, organ insulin comes from? Pop in the chat box where you think insulin, uh, which organ insulin comes from. Anybody knows? Yes, the roller coaster. Which, oh yeah, the pancreas, bingo. So let's say, does anybody know, like let's say you were to drink for breakfast a bottle of Lucozade and a muffin. How many teaspoons of sugar are in a bottle of Lucozade? Does anybody know? Take some guesses, give me some numbers. Three, no, 10, no, 15, no, much more than that, it's 21. 21 teaspoons of sugar, everybody, which is mad. That's so much more than one, which is what your body can handle. So what is going on when we, um, when we are eating too much sugar? Bear with me one sec. So if you were to drink a bottle of Lucozade for breakfast and a muffin, your blood glucose is gonna rise really high really quickly. Can you see here, I put, this, I put together this blood sugar roller coaster. So when your blood glucose rises really high really quickly, it calls upon a hormone called insulin. Now insulin's role is to basically take that sugar out of the bloodstream, pack it into the cells so that you can utilize it for energy. However, what goes up must come down. And essentially, if you're, if you're eating so much sugar all at once, um, your insulin can't work quick enough. And so invariably, yes, you're gonna have that initial rush, that sugar rush, but about 30 to 60 minutes later, you're likely to have a blood sugar crash. And you've always got to look to the meal before to identify why you're slumping. So most of you put your hand up and you were like, yes, I've got energy slumps mid-afternoon. Um, but typically, when we have that blood glucose drop, that dip, what is it that we're normally reaching for? What would we go and, and grab? We'd have a coffee, right? Or a chocolate bar mid-morning, wouldn't we? But that just perpetuates this blood sugar roller coaster. And then you've got high insulin levels, high blood sugar, high insulin, and you're going to have that slump again. So guys, the take-home message is if you want to have more energy, you just got to change what you're eating and you have to balance your blood sugar levels. So it's balancing your blood sugar levels is key. And um, if you do that, you're much more likely to feel more energized, better concentration, less cravings, um, and 100% and more energy. Um, so how do we do that? We basically have to look at what we're doing. So this is the ideal. This is what we want to try and do is make sure that we've got our blood sugar levels on a nice, even keel. Okay, does that make sense? So instead of having, let's say, a muffin and Lucas A for breakfast, we might have slow release carbohydrates. So that would be things like rye bread, right? And we would eat it with some protein. So protein is your best friend, really, when it comes to balancing your blood sugar levels. It really helps to keep your blood glucose on a nice, even keel. Does anybody know why protein does that? What is it about protein that keeps our blood glucose on a nice, even keel? Any guesses? What is it about protein that, you know, why is it that protein doesn't make our blood glucose go all over the place? Keeps you fuller for longer, yeah. But it's easy, it's basically, there's no, uh, there's no sugar in fish, right? There's no glucose in chicken. And so my top tip for you is if you wanna have more energy, guys, and balance your blood sugar levels, you gotta make sure that you're eating protein at every meal and snack, okay? So breakfast, mid-morning snack, lunch, mid-afternoon snack, and then dinner, all right? So we already know how, many, how much protein we need. We need a gram of protein per kilo of body weight. Um, and I'm going to go through with you later how much um, some meal and sack ideas. And then obviously you've got the ebook at the end, which has got your 10 day quarantine menu. So we want to make sure that we're not overdoing it with the refined carbohydrates. You know, that's things like the, um, the things that we love, the, the cakes, the chocolate, the biscuits. These foods wreak havoc with our blood sugar levels and they make us have this high and then this low. Same thing with um, white pasta, white bread, white rice. I mean, does anybody know why these foods are white? 
they've basically been bleached, which means that 80% of the nutrients have been taken out. So if, if you've ever had a bowl of pasta for lunch, guys, and felt really sleepy afterwards, that's your, that's your blood glucose dropping. Um, and it's because you're having this roller coaster effect. So we really want to make sure that we're not overdoing the um, refined carbohydrates, not eating too much sugar, um, and swapping the uh, refined car carbohydrates for complex carbs. So rather than having um, cakes, biscuits, donuts, you might have, for example, you know, brown rice instead of um, white rice. You might have brown bread instead of um, white bread and brown pasta, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. Hope that makes sense. So I want to know how much coffee you guys drink. Just put in your chat box how many cups of coffee are you drinking per day, per day please? Let's see. One to two, six, none. Seven. Wow, 15. Blimey. <laughs> Does anybody get that stimmy feeling where you feel a bit jittery? Does anybody get that? Caffeine free. Okay, cool. Yep, 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 yep. Well, guess what, guys? That means that your liver doesn't have adequate enzymes to break down the caffeine, right, in your coffee. Um, and so you're the people that are actually quite sensitive to caffeine. You're the ones that got to be careful. So caffeine behaves just like sugar in the body. It does this to your blood sugar level. So yes, it gives you that initial energy rush. Uh, and then 20, 30 minutes later, slump, you're going to have a crash. And um, I find, to be quite honest with you, you've got to remember that um, caffeine is a stimulant, right? And it's superficial energy. So yes, it gives you that initial energy rush, rush but in the long time, um, it actually makes you much more tired. And I actually cut out caffeine for a year when I was um, in bed for three years. And um, my energy literally went from there to there. And I find that everybody that has um, goes caffeine free, they really, their energy just really improves. They're like, wow, I've, I've never noticed that before. But you've got to be careful about coming off caffeine. Um, um, because it actually, if you're drinking a lot of caffeine, then you can become, you can have withdrawal symptoms, you can get quite bad headaches. So my tip for you is to do coffee replacements. I don't know if you've ever heard of these before. Cairo Extra, Barley Cup Coffee, Dandelion Coffee. They all look the same, smell the same, they don't quite taste the same, but it's, you know, you're swapping something for something else. Whenever you take something out of the diet, it's really important to replace it with something else. So I've just put those up here. And then if you want to have caffeine-free teas, you know, most teas are caffeine-free apart from green tea, black tea, and white tea. So all other teas are caffeine-free. So that's things like peppermint tea, nettle tea, chamomile tea. So you might want to do a bit of a swap, guys. Whole Earth, do a great coffee replacement. Yes. It's the worst withdrawals. Yes. Herbal tea. Yes. Decaf. Yeah. So decaf still contains um, little bits of, of, of caffeine, but the chemical residues that are left over, um, they actually get absorbed into the body. So you can use it as a substitute, but I would just, you know, rotate it. Sometimes have a decaf, sometimes have a cup of, um, what is it, um, peppermint tea and that kind of thing. Yeah, matcha contains caffeine as well, but not as much. So a cup of coffee contains about 100 milligrams of caffeine, and a cup of matcha contains only about 30 milligrams. And matcha is obviously much more higher in um, um, antioxidants and much more protective for the heart and that kind of thing as well. Good. So foods to eat, foods to focus on. So we want to make sure if you want my energy, we're focusing on quality proteins. So that's things like chicken, fish, eggs, and also vegetarian protein as well. That's things like quinoa, lentils, chickpeas, that kind of thing. We want to make sure that we're focusing on the smart carbohydrates. That's the slow release carbs. Um, and they, they basically have more fiber, more vitamins and minerals. That's why you don't slump. And that's why you feel more energized when you eat them. Um, fruits and vegetables, and we've got. To, I want to make sure that you guys are, are eating at least eight portions of fruit and veg per day, with the emphasis being on vegetables. And then we want to make sure that we're having healthy fats every single day. So that's things like oily fish, nuts, seeds, that kind of thing. And then foods to avoid: not too much sugar, not too much caffeine, not too much alcohol. I want to do a poll actually, or just pop in your chat box, guys. Who's drinking more alcohol now in quarantine? Who's drinking more? Put just put more or yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Way more, less more, less more. Okay, 50-50 here. I don't drink. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> I, I have to say, I haven't I've barely touched it. And it's just my skin's been amazing. Has anybody else's skin been really good? Less, okay, a bit, a bit. Cool. So yeah, alcohol wreaks havoc with your blood sugar levels. It's inflammatory in the body. It really is not, if you're trying to lose weight, alcohol is really going to inhibit that because it's just, it's just liquid carbohydrate. And any excess carbohydrate, guys, gets converted into glycogen, which is stored carbohydrate. So you want to be careful about not overdoing it and not overdoing the refined carbohydrates in the processed foods. You know, every meal is an opportunity to feed or fail your body. So 
um, just putting it, saying, just saying. <laughs> So food swaps, so just, um, you know, like I said before, if you're taking something out, it's important to replace it with something else. So just, you know, really success comes down to preparation and organization. So getting organized, making your own meals, cooking from scratch. I'm going to send you the menu so that you guys can have that. But, um, you know, having all the healthy things in your cupboard, all the healthy foods in your fridge is really key to success. And, you know, just swapping all the biscuits and um you know the chocolate for healthy food bars protein bars and I, i'll send you all the recipes to all of these things here you've got raw sushi this is a, pro, a vanilla protein bar and some smoothies as well big fan of smoothies so i'll just whiz through some meal and sack ideas and then we'll go i might have to um quickly whiz through the adrenal glands and then um i want to open it up to q a for you guys it's whizzing by um are you guys learning a lot are you i hope that i'm not going too fast and you guys learning lots of things are you guys learning Yes, 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 yes. Loads. Perfect. I hope you're making some good notes. Great. Perfect. So, um, meal and sagadeus. So, for example, breakfast, you might have gluten free toast or brown toast, for example, with some eggs, protein smoothie, smoked salmon. Lunch, make sure you're focusing on the protein first. So, you might do tuna steaks with mango, salsa, barbecue fish kebabs, all these sorts of things. And these are in your 10 day quarantine menu, guys. And I've put it together and it's got, it basically covers everything you can eat Monday to Sunday. Monday this, Tuesday that, with all the snacks, all the recipes and everything's at the back. So you're going to like that. And then healthy snacks. So that's things like hummus, chopped vegetables, oat cakes with nut butter, protein smoothies. That's one here. That I, that's one I made earlier. Um, and homemade protein bars. But don't worry, I'm going to send you all the recipes so you can have that. So let's just do a quick uh, adrenal glands um, tour. And I want to talk to you about how stress affects your energy. So again, put in the chat box, guys. Um, does anybody feel like they're being, in fact, actually, let's do this. Who's feeling a bit overworked at the moment? Overwhelmed, stressed out? Is anybody having anxiety at home? Are you feeling quite worried about the future? Do you feel like your stress levels have gone up? Yeah, okay, wow. Yeah, okay. Anxious on and off, good days, bad days. Does anybody struggle to get out of bed in the morning? Who, who goes to bed? Um, and wakes up even after a good night's sleep, but still feels tired. Does anybody just put a yes if you if you wake up, you don't sleep? Okay, yeah. My sleep's been terrible. It's been very up and down. But I've got some sleep tips coming up. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody feel dizzy at all at moments throughout the day? Does anybody feel really tired after exercise? Anybody craving salts? Body? Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, look. All of you have said yes, 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 yes. So these are signs and symptoms that your adrenal glands might be suffering so your adrenal glands are here they're about the size of a walnut you've got two of them and they sit on top of your kidneys here and they're probably the most important gland in your body so they basically are responsible for your stress response and every time you feel like you're feeling stress or there's a stressor you know your brain is detecting stress every three to six seconds and if it sees something stressful it will tell the adrenal glands to pump two hormones into the bloodstream and i know you've heard of these it's adrenaline and it's cortisol right so adrenaline is responsible for making our heart beat fast and our pupils dilate but what cortisol's role is um cortisol is basically responsible for making sure that you've got glucose in the bloodstream going to the muscles so you can run away from that saber-toothed tiger or you can fight it, right? Does that make sense? So, you know, we've all been there, we've all experienced a stressful situation and there's different levels of stress. You've got the alarm stage where you have that stressor and then you go home and everything's okay. And then you've got the resistance stage, which is where you've got one stress that doesn't go away, then you've got another one and another one and they build and they build and they build and you just start to feel a bit irritated and you know, you can't sleep, you feel wired but tired. And this is the most common stage to be honest with you. And then you've got the exhaustion stage, which is totally where I was, AKA burnout. And you really know about it. Like you're a shadow of your former self. You can't do anything. You lose your drive, your motivation. You can't get out of bed in the morning. You just, you've, um, you find small tasks challenging and uh, you just, you're just really weak. So if you are that person and you want to support the adrenal glands, I've come up with this really simple, easy strategy on how to deal with stress. So you can either react to stress or you can respond. And I know you probably know somebody, who knows someone, put yes in the chat box, that's really stressy and they stress about everything. Or maybe it's you, maybe you know someone, or it's yourself that just is a stressy person, they get stressed about everything. <laughs> yeah, right? Loads of you know people, yeah. And that is because they're just reacting constantly. So always their, their adrenal glands are pumping these, these two hormones in the bloodstream and they're just like, they're constantly stressed. And so over a long period of time, you know, that's gonna actually burn them out. So instead of reacting, you can choose to respond to the stresses. And I, I got really good at this when I was really fatigued, but basically 
The number one way to deal with stress is putting it into perspective. Okay, and you can do that by asking yourself these three questions. So next time you feel like there's a stressful situation coming along, you're hit by stress, ask yourself, is it the end of the world, that stressor? No, it isn't. Will it change in time? Yes, definitely, because nothing lasts forever, not even this pandemic, and it will move on and, it, you know, not, everything is fleeting. And is there someone worse off than you? Always. And I, I just, I hope that you can use this just to put it into perspective, because you know, then we can deflect stress and we don't absorb it. And then you protect your adrenal glands because you're not mounting that stress response. So I hope you can use that guys and, and you find that effective. Um, I'm, I'm, um, what else? I want to go to, um, the sleep, the sleep thing. So how many hours of sleep are you guys getting per night? Put in the chat box because sleep is absolutely fundamental for energy. It's paramount for the recovery of the adrenal glands. That's because when you're sleeping, your body is repairing and healing. That's when your adrenal glands are manufacturing the stress hormone, let's see how much sleep you're getting. Four hours, oh my goodness. Six, guys, this is not enough, four hours. Okay, we need eight hours of sleep per night. Eight to nine, but still knackered. Okay, I've got some tips for you here because I know you, you guys all want some tips. So my first tip is you've got to put your phone on airplane mode, right? It is a complete game changer. Does anybody put their phone on airplane mode at night? Just hit whack a yes in the, in the chat box. Um, and even putting it out of reach, because what are we all doing? between the hours of 10 o'clock and midnight, what are we doing on our phones? We're scrolling, aren't we? And that blue light is going into our, into our eyes. And that light from your phone or any screen, guys, it delays the release of melatonin for up to three hours. And melatonin is a hormone that basically gets us ready for bed. It's like the lieutenant telling your body to get ready for bed and then we can fall asleep. Um, um, and you know, the hours of sleep you get between 10 o'clock and midnight, they're the most boosting. And that's when melatonin is surging because it's dark. So that you've got to make sure you, you, you're asleep within that, within that window and your phone's away because you don't want to be distracted. Um, one in three people check their phone in the middle of the night. So don't be one of the statistics. Um, I don't know if you know this, but your body has to be two to three degrees lower in order for you to initiate sleep. So you want to make sure that you're in a cool room, you're not covered and smothered with clothes and covers. Um, if you're too hot, it will take you longer to fall asleep. And then I use things like CBD oil. Has anybody ever used CBD oil to help you relax the mind and fall asleep? No, it's so effective. There's such a, a, a lot of growing evidence to suggest that CBD oil is really, this is, a, this is a non-THC, by the way, this is a non-psychoactive version. And it's really good for just calming the mind and calming you down. And uh, yes, love it, cool. So you can take some of that, or if you can't take that, um, I'm going to recommend a, a, a good brand. I can't remember the name of it, but I'll put that in. I'll send it in the email. I'll, I'll send you an email. I'll also send you which supplements to take for your immune system if you want. Would that be good? Yeah? Perfect. Reishi mushroom. So have you guys heard of the reishi mushroom? It's basically you just drink it as a tea. And I'll, again, I'll send this in the, in the, in the email. And um, this has been clinically proven to reduce sleep latency and improve the overall quality of your sleep. So those are my top tips for how to get a good night's sleep um, and then screen time. So the average person, did you know that the average person taps, swipes, clicks on their phone 2,617 times per day? Whose screen time's gone up during quarantine? Mm. It's mad. I've gone from like three hours to seven hours and I'm like, oh, it's crazy. So yeah, airplane mode. And 80% of smartphone users are on their phone within 15 minutes of waking. I actually think it's mad, isn't it? I actually think it's 15 seconds though, guys. Good, okay, I wanna open up to questions. But before I do, I wrote a book. It's called Burnout's a Bitch. And basically it's all about my recovery from burnout and how I collapsed and how I got back on my feet. And in this book, it helps you guys to identify why you're tired all the time. And it identifies all the unexpected reasons that you're tired all the time as well, like social media, not enough food, um, too much exercise, toxic relationships. Um, so it's really to help you navigate why you're tired all the time and to get your energy back as quickly and as easily as possible. It covers all the foods you need to eat for energy, all the foods to avoid for energy, which nutrients give you energy, which supplements give you energy, which exercises, and then it tells you how to manage stress, how to master your mindset, and then it breaks into a beautiful six-week um, uh, recipe plan. Um, meal plan, sorry, with brand new recipes. And I'm, I've put so much work into this book and it's absolutely beautiful. It's being printed at the moment, but it comes out in January. We've, we've had to move the date 
Um, it comes out January uh, the 7th, 2021. Um, so it's, it's over um, on Amazon, guys, if you want to check it out. The link's in my bio on Instagram, and there's six pounds off at the moment, so you can buy it pre-order. But if you want more information about what we talked about today, all about energy and recovering from burnout and managing stress, that's the book for you. Good. So let me open it up to you guys. Who's got some questions? I know that you're probably dying to ask me some questions. So we've got about seven minutes. Ask away chums. Why? Is Baraka safe to take every day? It is safe to take every day, but it's, it's, point, it's kind of pointless. You know, you do got, I know we haven't covered supplements and I am going to cover them in, in next week's. So I think it's the third week. Um, but you do get what you pay for when it comes to supplements. So, you know, if you're going to the high street and you're just spending not so much money, um, you know, in like Holland and Barrett, in Tesco, in, in, in Superdrug, the dosage is very low. The bioavailability, which means the absorption rate is very poor and they're often packed with fillers. So, um, yeah, I, I would take like a multivitamin and mineral, like a really good um, high strength multivitamin mineral. And again, would it, I'll recommend some supplements that you can take. Like a, 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 I can do like a sort of maybe I'll do this. Actually, I'll outline in the in the last week um, a good supplement plan just for general health. That's a really good idea. Let me do that. OK, so um, can you take a number of vitamins all at once? Yes, you can. Um, B vitamins. In fact, if you take B vitamins, it's best to take B vitamins in synergy. So don't just take B1 on its own. Take a B vitamin complex. And uh, again, um, uh, if you're taking B vitamins C and vitamin C, they, these are the water soluble vitamins. So yes, they are safe to take. Where did I train in nutrition? I trained at the Institute of Optimal Nutrition. If you Google, if you, guys, if you want to know more about um, becoming a nutritionist or learning more, they have like a home course, which is like six months or something, six weeks, six months, maybe it's a year, I can't remember. But if you just Google ION, the Institute of Optimal Nutrition, they've got some lovely little courses there. Or there's another course called CNM, and that's the College of Naturopathic um, uh, Medicine. So check those out. Is porridge a good breakfast breakfast? Other breakfasts mention eggs, meat, please, could you advise? Yeah, porridge is, is a good breakfast because it's um, so release carbohydrates, it's got lots of, um, uh, what's it, fiber, but it doesn't have much protein. And again, back to the blood sugar balancing and having more energy. Guys, I promise you, if you start your day with a fat-based, protein-based breakfast, so like scrambled eggs with smoked salmon and vegetables, or a protein smoothie, you're much more likely to, have, to feel much more satiated all the way through to lunch. You will have more energy because you're balancing your blood sugar levels. Your concentration will be much better. But again, it's all in the 10-day quarantine menu, and I'm going to send you that in, uh, right after this. So I'm vegetarian. Ah, you're, you're thinking moving. Should you, you said vegetarian should take omega-3 supplements always. I heard supplements before you take. Um, should you take, should you do some? Yeah, it's a really good question. If you are vegetarian, you want to make sure that you're um, supplementing with protein. So making sure you're getting adequate protein, and even, even in the form of protein powders. And I'm a big fan of protein powders. And again, yes, I do use protein powders. Sorry, there's so many questions. <laughs> what I'll do, guys, is I will, I will save these questions and I'll do a little video uh, response and I'll upload those on my story so that nobody misses out. Would that be good? Yeah, perfect. Um, protein powder. So vegetarians need protein. They need um, B12. They're quite often deficient in B12. And yes, you need to be taking um, either omega-3 in the form of a fish if you're a vegan in the form of flaxseed oil. Um, and again, get a reputable brand. If, if then they're not harmful, no, as long as you get a reputable brand, which is a good dosage. What's when's best to have caffeine? Should yes, okay. So really good question. Caffeine has a half life of five to seven hours, right? So if you drink a cup of coffee in the morning, half of that caffeine is still going to be in your bloodstream uh, five to seven hours earlier. So it's really important, guys, to make sure that you're having caffeine in the morning. Um, it really affects your sleep if you're having it mid afternoon. I don't know how people can have it. I don't know why people have it after dinner. Um, but it really, in, it basically, um, what's the word, inhibits the release of melatonin and stops you from falling asleep because it's a stimulant. So yeah, really good question. Make sure, it, I would just have one cup of coffee a day, guys. If you really got to have coffee, have it once a day, first have it in the morning and make sure that you're having it with some food so that, that caffeine doesn't surge with your blood sugar levels and you don't get that, get that slump. Um, yeah, what else, what else? What do you think of intermittent testing intermittent fasting i'm going to cover this in my in uh, this is in the one of the other modules 
I think it's amazing. It really is effective, but it's only to be used as a tool. And I only use it as a tool for people who really find it difficult to lose weight. And we implement that for a two week window, right? And it's really good. It's not good for everybody. So it's very effective, but it, it's definitely not for everyone. It's definitely not for people who have got chronic fatigue, who've got energy issues, who've got thyroid issues, who have a history of eating disorders. Um, because essentially you're, you're, you're skipping meals and you're in, you're calorie, in a calorie deficit. But for those people who have got a strong constituency, you know, they're robust, they've got a good, healthy, all-round, um, what's the word, uh, diet, it, it can be very, very effective. And I find that women do well on about a fast of about sort of 14 to 14 hours, 12 to 14 hours, whereas guys can go for a little bit longer. So, yeah, I do use it. Um, but it's, it's just as a tool, everybody, not, not forever. Yes. How can I find out if I'm low on micronutrients? Is this something a blood test can do and the GP will cover? Yeah. So I use a laboratory called Genova and they do a whole ton of tests. They can test, they basically um, measure saliva, they measure your blood, but the best one for measuring micronutrients is measuring your urine. Um, it's called the one test. I'll put this in the, in the notes guys. It's called the one test. And you, they basically send you a kit and you pee in a pot and then you send that to the lab and it measures everything from your proteins, which amino acids you're deficient in, uh, which fats you're deficient in, which ones you need. And it also tells you if you're deficient in magnesium, sodium, potassium, da, da, da. So that's a really, really good one. Um, and I'll send that. There's another one called the hair mineral analysis test, which is brilliant. You just basically chop a little bit of your hair, send it to the lab, and then you get the results. And that basically uh, tells you which um, minerals that you're deficient in. So whether you're deficient in magnesium, potassium, sodium, whatever. Um, and it also tells you whether you've got heavy metal toxicity. So if you've got like, um, what was it, uh, mercury toxicity, and you've got high levels of cadmium in, in your tissues you're going to feel tired you're going to have headaches and it's really important to detoxify and get that out so that's i really like that those tests are really really good um okay let's do a few more questions oh yes what do you think of intermittent fasting for yes no absolutely intermittent fasting with someone who's got burnout and adrenal fatigue no way avoid it like the plague because when you're when you're skipping meals your blood glucose drops and that actually can tell the adrenal glands to release um what's it uh cortisol and, and adrenaline into the bloodstream. So essentially when you're skipping your meals, guys, you're mounting a stress response. Okay, um, I quickly want to ask you guys some questions. Can you send us the link to the ratio machine? Yes, I will. How do you stop yourself from being addicted to sugar? You have to make sure that you're balancing your blood sugar levels. So making sure that you're eating protein at every meal and snack. And there's one other tip that you can take, um, which is fish oils. Supplementing fish oils is really effective for curbing any sugar cravings. Because what the fish oil does is it basically assists insulin in that blood transport, um, transportation. So the, in, so the um, fish oils help you to take the um, sugar out of the bloodstream and pack it into the cells. So if you have got sugar cravings, guys, take one fish oil at breakfast and one at lunch. Yeah? Good. Before we go, I'm, I've recorded all your questions. There's so many, thank you. I've got, thank you so much, good. <laughs> So guys, um, I want to ask you what one thing you have concluded today on this course. And I'm really, I'm, I've really, I've loved talking to you. It's been so fun. And I really want to know what one thing you might change. So just pop in the little chat box there. What one thing you might do differently now that you've been chatting to me. Brilliant. Thank you. Right. Too much caffeine. Yes. Increase your vegetables. Sleep more. Up my protein. Increase my protein. Uh, sleep supplements. Count protein intake. Yeah less coffee, change my breakfast, lower alcohol. Amazing. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Cool. Well, I'll be checking up on you next week <laughs> and seeing how you're getting on. But look, it's just gone seven. I don't want to keep you. I really love talking to you this evening. You're a great bunch. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, thank you again for making your donations. I promise I will send everything that you need tomorrow. First thing in the morning, I will send you the slides. I will send you the recording of the presentation. I will send you lots of other notes that we talked about, all the supplements that we talked about and all the links. And I will also send you the recording. So yeah, I said before, next week, we'll be, uh, you're all signed up to the course every single week. So I will see you next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Thanks, guys. Give us a wave. Good evening. Bye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>